This is the Blockchain Show. Go! The Blockchain Show is a podcast that demystifies cryptocurrency and distributed ledger technology. Hello, blockchain fans, and welcome to da, 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 Show 100. 100. Hey, that's Mark joining me here, and we've also got Ethan. Hello. Yeah, it's Show 100, people, and the Show 100. Who knew we'd make it to 100 shows? I had every single faith, just like I've got faith in Bitcoin to hit 20,000 dollars again anyway so this is show 100 and we're going to reflect on some of our better episodes while entertaining you and telling you about some of the things you might have missed in the past and also give you an insight into the future in our new spot on episode 100 an insight into the future so the future mark so uh, have you had a busy week hi everybody yes over the last week and a half my house has tried to kill me uh, several times, uh, or member of my family. Uh, the ceiling fell in, the shower screen fell off, and it's all, yeah, it's, it's like it's building up to be like a haunted house for Halloween. It, is that why your microphone's scratchy as well? No, my microphone's scratchy because it's always scratchy. I just That's better. That's, so what have, you, what have you done about your house falling in, and how could a blockchain stop that? <laughs> that's a good question i don't actually thought about that uh, maybe the blockchain would would help record the events where members of my family accidentally turn off important electrical items that cause flooding <laughs> that would be mm. good uh so that there's a, a a single version of the truth as to who did what and when so i can punish them and take money out of their pocket money funds punishing the family okay good punishing the family uh, uh, <laughs> shame for punishing the family <laughs> But potentially, you know, if they have a, a, a some sort of cryptocurrency wallet uh, linked to that event, then I can automatically take payment away from them so that they can uh, help fix the ceiling, uh, you know, uh, help uh, help get the plaster around. Uh, so that would be a, a useful thing. Uh, no, I can't think of anything else. Wasp's nest was the other one. We had a we had a we had a wasp's nest in our loft, and uh, I got woken up on a Sunday morning by a, a wasp sting, which was not the most pleasant. Uh, waking up I've ever had uh, but uh, no so apart from that I'll... so the wasp sting wasn't the best yes. way to wake you up in the morning what is the <laughs> best way to wake up Mark in the morning <laughs> oh this is on a postcard come on <laughs> <laughs> and some of you will already know this one um, but uh, yeah I'll just on a postcard what is the best way to wake up Mark in the morning the answer is of course a bacon sandwich and a cup of tea of course it is proof that there is a god bacon is that proof Absolutely. So all change at work, but uh, you're keeping yes. busy. Yes, I am. You, you know, that, that does make me think that we haven't heard from anybody doing blockchain around home automation. I would have thought that home automation and actually logging events would be an ideal thing for blockchain. I think we talked a little bit about it around about June of this year. Um, if uh, those of us not in the uh, United States of America um, remember the uh, FIFA World Cup, the Soccer World Cup uh, in, I think, June, July of this year. In the UK, there was a heck of a load of adverts on at each um, interval, at each break for the football. And there was, a, I think, a South Korean company advertising how the blockchain was going to revolutionize home automation. Didn't actually tell you how or when. Um, but there was a huge amount of advertising going on at the time. And I thought, wow, that's, that's starting to get mainstream. Um, so yeah, that was that was back in June of this year. Yeah, but but don't be so sure of wiping out America for not being soccer fans because I myself was down there in the pub watching the game, and if anybody need an excuse to drink at seven o'clock in the morning, um, there we go. I started becoming a soccer fan just for that, and apparently the the American nation has embraced soccer for the simple reason that they know what time the game is going to finish, roughly. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's well-structured, right? It, it, it's it's well sometime, structured. Sometimes it gives you a little bit of extra time to have a little bit more to drink. Um, true. You know, if you're feeling in the mood, if it's been an exciting game or, a, you know, or a, even a boring game, uh, give you a little bit of extra time just to get in the mood and uh, have a couple, you know, maybe have another round of drinks. And, uh, and then, then you, you know, pop off into work at 8 a.m. Uh, having had several drinks, always always a good day. Yeah, yeah. Though we don't advocate that at all. No, 
Um, Plus, but, also, you know, I, I, I know that uh, you know soccer is soccer is a thing in, in the United States. You know, we've we've recently lent to Wayne Rooney uh, as uh, you know a one of our one of our uh, well one of the greatest English footballers of all time. I would say we will look back at his career in maybe ten twenty years and recognise the value that Wayne Rooney brought to us. He was probably our best footballer of a generation. He's the highest scoring English international soccer player. So he's he's all right generally. Mm. Uh, Orlando, City, Orlando City could definitely do with him. Yeah, he's at DC United, I think, isn't he? Up in, uh, up in Washington, DC. Um, but yeah, uh, he's doing very well. He's, he's increased the size of their average crowds from 12,000 to 20,000 or something like that. Mark, Mark where, where, you're getting far too many statistics to do with soccer here. This is, this is I'm incredible. Sorry. I'm sorry. So how about them Jags, eh? Anyway. Thank you very much for downloading the podcast. Uh, we all appreciate it. Yes, and do. thank you for getting us to episode 100. And it's thanks to you so for downloading it. Yes, thanks a lot. And uh, thank you to also to all of our sponsors over the past year or so that Ian and I have been involved. And we look forward to many, many more. Uh, absolutely. And that, that's the thing. We, we don't just record this podcast for half an hour a week. We actually do a lot of research. We look at our sponsors' websites. We're reading white papers. And we are also doing the research into what's actually happening, news and events, which might affect the interviews we're doing. And also we do a lot of preparation between us in the background. So it's not just us recording half an hour uh, each week. It's at, uh, a lot goes into it to actually make sure we are abreast of the current situation podcast world. Ethan puts in a lot of time editing this and producing this. Sarah puts in a lot of time um, coming up with the fantastic graphics that, uh, that I think are, are core to the show's identity. So, yeah, we're all, um, we're all putting a, a bit of extra effort in there for your benefit. Absolutely. Okay. So, Mark. Mm. Yeah. This is what the listeners want to know about your favourite episode in the, the last ninety nine. My, I mean, one that's very close to my heart, I think, is is uh, episode fifty. So fifty episodes ago, um, was the digital gold where you and I met up uh, in person in in my hometown of Croydon. Uh, went down the local Bitcoin ATM. Well, I worked down the local head shop uh, where we can buy all kinds of uh, smoking and pipe paraphernalia uh, and uh, used for my first time, your first time, a Bitcoin ATM, which I think was a, it was a genuinely enjoyable uh, show to record. We'd met up. We'd not seen each other in person for a while. We uh, went went to the pub to prepare. <laughs> we uh, went over and and uh, and went to the the head shop to record the show. We then went back to the pub to down to to, to decompose uh, the essence of our uh, interview. We then went out and had more drinks. And then the next morning, I think we we did our usual uh, at the time news and events and updates session. Um, so it was great fun, kind of getting together. And again, the uh, similar when we got together in uh, Orlando, in your hometown, not so long ago in August of this year, uh, and, uh, and uh, I think episode ninety, so ten episodes ago, we uh, we did the the Epcot Center or the, the Epcot uh, uh, round the lake tour of nations and uh, and how people were you know were aware or were not aware of blockchain and what was going on in the world of blockchain. So it's always fun when when it's more than just you know, us sitting around a, a laptop or a phone uh, recording an interview. It's always fun kind of engaging, getting together with, with either yourself or indeed I, I really enjoyed the episode I recorded with uh, Nuggets. I think that was episode 52. And that was my first sort of in-person interview. I went to Nuggets office in, in Paddington in London. I uh, met Seema and Alistair, had a good chat with them about where their, uh, what their roadmap was, what, what Nuggets were trying to do. And next week, I hope to be meeting up with Seema and Alistair again to have a kind of catch up about a year down the line, see what's gone on, uh, see if they've actually you know, moved forward in that year. They're still a going concern, so you would hope so and you would think so. Um, so, yeah, it's those personal interactions that I really enjoy. I, I must say, I, I do remember a, a cold and dank uh, Croydon when we mess up and we went to the... Croydon's always cold and dank. Yes, yes. You're just, you're just lucky you're not being stabbed by a zombie knife. That's, 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 uh, <laughs> that's what you just... <laughs> well, we, 
We were in a dodgy part of town and we were greeted by this anonymous black box with an LCD screen on it saying, Bitcoin, <laughs> and we, we didn't know what to expect. And you put all of your ill-gotten gains in there from, from your employment and and it turned into Bitcoin miraculously. How long did it how long did it take? It took about 12 hours, was it? Uh, it wasn't that long. I think it was kind of done by the next day. It was eight, to, yeah, maybe eight to twelve hours. Um, I've used um, other Bitcoin ATMs uh, since then uh, in other parts of London, and actually, it seems to have gone quicker. They they, they seem to have sped up, and the coins have uh, and, and the uh, yeah the value was added to my wallet a lot quicker than that. So, yeah, that, that was a, a really interesting experience. It's something. It's probably my first introduction or first awareness into into Bitcoin is driving past this shop you know, years ago. Um, yeah, clearly there's a lot of noise on the internet and stuff, but but actually my first sort of realization that it's more than just an internet phenomenon. There's a you know, it's a physical thing. You can go into this shop, you can deposit Bitcoin, uh, or you can deposit cash, and it turns into Bitcoin. It was like, oh, yeah, okay, it's, it's more than just a uh, a meme or an internet phenomenon. It's a it's a real thing. So it was. Um, yeah, it was good in many ways to to go and do that show. I think we had a bit of fun with that show. Uh, Sarah did some fantastic um, Snoop Dogg based graphics, I think, for the show. Um, and it's all uh, drug dealers and guns, Mark. All drug dealers and guns. Yes, that's the phrase that pays uh, for Ian every time. Can you stop stroking your microphone, Mark, when you're talking? Uh, it's it's not my microphone. I'm stroking. That's much better. That's much better. Yeah, yeah. We're getting a lot of noise there. I, I don't want to blow the speakers in our listeners' Audi A4 as they're driving home from work. That's the other phrase that pays. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, I, I, listeners, I'm, please tell me what you're doing uh, when you're listening to the podcast. It would be interesting. And where you're doing it. Exactly. Now, now who was delivering pizza with their Aston Martin when we did a pop interview? Oh, so that was Stephen Sprague or Sprague from Rivets. Uh, Rivet. So- Stephen was a big uh, Aston Martin fan, and I think I think either his dad or a relative was uh, involved in the sort of the rescuing of Aston in the eighties, maybe um, when they were having a bit of trouble. They'd uh, you know clearly a top end British car manufacturing mark, um, and they but they were fell into bad financial times. But I think Stephen's dad, let's say Stephen's dad, was uh, part of the rescue package, and I think. Aston have gone on to do great things since then. Um, probably better things, arguably, than than they were doing in the seventies and eighties. Massively, DB eleven, DB nine, beautiful cars. Yeah, yeah, they they're doing some amazing stuff. And if you look back at the um, angular eighties uh, Lagonda ha, with the digital dashboard, which was about about as uh, reliable as a Dragon thirty two computer. And if you don't know where the Dragon 32 computer is, you can actually uh, Google that. It's when the uh, the Welsh decided to invent electricity and then straight away invent a computer afterwards. And uh, yeah, it wasn't a great computer at all, the Dragon 32. But, uh, no, there we go. second only to the BBC Micro. How's my sound now? That's much better. There we go. Oh, yeah, right. I think I think you probably need to ground yourself, get rid of any yeah. static from your, yeah. from your Lycra you're wearing. <laughs> there you go, up on the boiler. What my 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 favourite episode was one which was slightly off the wall, and it was where we were talking to the some guys from California, and I said this sounds exactly like the TV program Silicon Valley as a joke, and they said yes, that's exactly what we're doing. And that was episode eighty-two. We're no, sorry, seventy-two with Constellation. That was with Wyatt and Zach from Constellation. Uh, Wyatt, one of the greatest names I think in blockchain. Wyatt Melman Flock. Um, I think, uh, yeah, they were they were pretty cool guys. It was great fun to talk to them. Wyatt and Zach, you can you can imagine they're the sort of person people. Sorry, who might be moving to Canada very soon. Yes, they might. Be. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that but, might be. Because, because it's a great centre of blockchain technology in. Exactly. And, and there, there, there's also a very good South Park episode which covers that off, uh, which, oh, is wow. now, which is um, quite amusing, around, around Canada's latest change in legal status of some items, shall we say. Hmm. Which is, hey, 
Hey, speaking of the news, have you seen that out Elton Musk is uh, getting all Bitcoiny at the moment? Elon. <clears throat> yeah, Elton. <laughs> Elton Musk. Elton Musk. Is he a piano playing uh, 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 car enthusiast? Or it, it, could car enthusiast. It, it could be. It could be. It could be. You know, El- you know, for- Elton, Elton Musk sounds like, uh, yeah, sounds like a perfume for, uh, you know, sh- a yes. aftershave for men's yes. men. Yes. I just, I just wanted to go out and treat my lady to a good night. So I just spray on a bit of Elton Musk and she's putty in my hands. <laughs> Saturday night is all right for fighting. Yep. Especially in Croydon. We're back to Croydon now, aren't we? Yeah, we're always back to Croydon. Yeah. So what, what else is memorable? Um, the Disney, the Disney experience around Epcot. Uh, yeah. If you are listening to this, when you get home, have a look at it. We filmed ourselves walking around Epcot, having a beverage or two, and interviewing people to find out what they thought of blockchain, how important it was to their lives, and if they've heard of it. And I really, I really enjoyed talking of Orlando. I really enjoyed when, when you, uh, I think, did one of your first sort of in-person interviews um, and met Janelle from um, Dragon Chain in uh, in Orlando. And you sort of were, you were a bit buzzed at the time that you were able to walk to the interview and uh, enjoy, you know, leave home at a reasonable time, walk fifteen minutes or whatever it was to your, to your local conference center, meet up with uh, we meet up with the Dragon Chain guys, have a great chat about Dragon Chain and NASCAR. Um, not that NASCAR is particularly close to your heart, but I know motor racing is close to your heart, and yeah. and, and have a have a you know have a, have a good chat. And I really enjoy those experiences where we where we get to meet people, look them in the eye, and and understand where they're coming from. That that was really good, and he was very uh, accomplished at speaking with such short notice, and and just having a chit chat with us as we say and that's that's one of the interesting things from an orlando point of view orlando has taken off over the last year nothing to do with me by the way with a lot of technical meetups we've got orlando tech and beer which happens every month which supplies beer and food and networking um we collaboration spaces we've got about four different businesses downtown where we can go and work and collaborate, which are just networking spaces. It's absolutely phenomenal, the, the growth. And I think the tech community is growing here with people leaving California for somewhere that's still sunny, but just doesn't have as much tax or traffic. Ethan, tell us about your view of California. And Are you seeing a brain drain from California? Are you seeing the, the amount of tech meetups and, and enthusiasm dissipating from california or is it still going on i wish i knew i try to go to some of these events uh you know you're, sp- you're talking about constellation they had uh they had a mixer event in west hollywood a couple weeks ago crowd machine had like a a cocktail meetup uh at some top of some beverly hills hotel and there was digital hollywood where all these uh you know entertainment companies are getting into uh ar and that sort of thing and you know, I just I just don't get out there enough is the problem. So interestingly enough, we do have a podcast coming up where we've got a lovely couple who started mining in their basement, just basically cryptocurrency, and now they've created their own martial arts coin. And they're not doing any funding, they're basically just creating the coin and letting it grow. And that that's gonna be coming up soon, and that's very, very interesting. So you're speaking to some uh, martial arts coin people over the next week. So that'll be in one of the next uh, podcasts coming up, right? Yes, yes, that will be. That'll be something like 101, 102. Uh, it all depends on other interviews, etc. So that will be a uh, very entertaining one coming up in the future. But w- what what do you think we should do for uh, episode 150, Mark? Well, that's a good question. I well, I I would love to get out there to California and uh, and do a show with me you ethan sarah actually in the same physical location i, I definitely think that's uh that it's ambitious but it's uh it's not not out of the uh not not out of reality you know um but it's um yeah i i i love those shows you know california is going to be a huge technology hub silicon valley up in uh up in the san fran area it's a huge amount of of, of work going on there it could be one of the 
uh, the, the blockchain centers of, of the world as, as well as one of the tech centers of the world. It's going to be great to um, you know, meet up in California with, with the gang, get the gang together uh, face-to-face, person-to-person for the first time. So that would be my uh, ambition. If not for show 150, then definitely show 200. That would be a great idea. And then we can do some babysitting for Ethan and Sarah so they can go out and have some cocktails. Uh, you don't know what you're getting into. <laughs> we don't know what you to came running out good. of his bed last night about midnight. Hey guys, I wanted to talk, you know, about that coin, the martial arts coin. Um, you remember, we were going to have Heather and Steve on this episode 100, but yeah, forward, <laughs> I don't mean to step on any toes if they're listening, but I thought it was funny. I wanted to share, but um, apparently uh, Heather's real turned off by the the blockchain space saying it's all you know bikinis and where's, where's the tunnel and uh i mean i think i i i can understand that it's um divisive right it's you know like and and polarizing i think it's like any um i think that's a sign that it's becoming you know mainstream it's like the internet right the internet in the 19 early 1990s was for nerds and um academics maybe the same thing um and the internet of the late 2000s uh, late late 90s early 2000s and and onwards there's a huge amount of porn on there there's a huge amount of um you know objectifying and and uh, and and not great things on the internet and i think um i think blockchain is just another technology that could be used that's, but that's almost like human nature right um it's uh, something that I, I think as humans we have to use in the right way. We have to choose and use the technology in the right way. Some people will choose and use it for um, you know, less great things. Some people use it for really great things. Uh, there's, there's so much that you know, the internet has done to, to revolutionize the way we live, make the way we live easier. And I, I fully believe that blockchain is, is, has that potential. It's not there yet. It's still in the early days. Um, but equally, people will exploit it and want to exploit it, want to um, use it, use the publicity that goes with it for nefarious purposes. And I can understand the the perspective that that Heather or others may have that oh, you know, it's just a fad. It's um, it's, it's moving on from drugs and guns, as, as Ian likes to say, to to boobs and uh, and asses, and uh, uh, <laughs> and it's you know. Th- that's unfortunately a little bit of human nature. Well, let, let me fill you in with the background. And what we're talking about is the martial arts coin promotion video, which we, we put out there. So Dan and Tara are a lovely couple. And Tara appeared in a promotional video in a bikini talking about martial arts coin. Now, I, I know Tara's mum as well. So that's all fine. So I asked them if I could use that video to promote their coin. And they said, that's fine. And actually, in the interview that's coming up, I asked Dan about, well, how did the bikini video come around? And he, and he said, I, I did a lot of promotional videos, and I got five or six people watching. So we both sat down and we decided to use the lowest common denominator, how to get more people to find out about this, and that involved sitting on a beach in a bikini talking about martial arts coin. And that's it. So it, it, it's a way of publicizing things. It, it's different. Uh, we haven't seen much of that in the uh, blockchain space at the moment, but who knows? I'm sure that the next areas, as you say, Mark, uh, are going to be the, the, the porn industry and the online gaming, gaming industry. If they can reduce their overheads by using blockchain, then they will. And perhaps they're already using that and people just don't know. Well, that's good to know. I think that's that's good to have a little background. I thought it was. If you actually listen to the video, she's got a lot of good stuff, and and I know that we've got the interview coming out, and I think it'll make a lot more sense than just boobs on the beach. Absolutely. It. it and in the interview, they're they're actually laughing about it and, and saying, "Look, we we had to get our message out there." And, and Tara is actually a very intelligent woman who uh, works in the finance industry, so she she didn't do it lightly, and uh, they they know exactly what they're doing but the simple fact was dan did a standard video out there telling people about the coin and nobody was interested even though he's quite a famous um, martial arts 
<clears throat> yeah, as I said, it's human nature. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think they've done anything particularly wrong. It might be on the, it might be on the humorous side of uh, of, of right, but uh, it, it is human nature. They're trying to appeal to the masses. They're trying to get the most visibility, and right now, um, you know, maybe that's an indication of where the audience for blockchain for cryptocurrency lies. Um, people who like looking at girls in bikinis. Um, that's something that I would hope changes over time. And again, you know, yes, yes, there's a list. There's a lot of porn on the internet, um, but that's not what everybody looks at the internet for. So I, I would hope that there's a balancing, and and in fact, a a, a, a balancing in the right direction, an overbalancing that says, well, actually, the the good, the um, the right side of things, the stuff you might not go to hell for, um, uh, starts coming out in, in blockchain tech. Yeah, I, I agree. And in, in this day and age where people people seem to be using the internet just to argue these days and everybody gets involved in the argument and you shouldn't be saying this and you shouldn't be doing that, whereas we should be actually moving forward. Uh, it, it's quite right, Mark, that the promotion, you've got to be very careful these days because you can be taken out of context and things can go very wrong for corporations as well as individuals just by a bit of negative publicity, which uh, I'm sure I'm sure we've all heard of advertisements which seem fine in the boardroom and then suddenly people put them out and, oh dear, no, we didn't spot that. So going back to, going back to our uh, look back over the 100 100- episodes you know i think i started listening to the blockchain show round about episode 30 35 something like that and back in the day um it was very definitely you know steve was in the chair as mm. as the knowledge as the as the the, the developer the, the technical expert uh and and certainly sarah and and uh, to an extent you ethan you know were there as the as the common people if that's not a a, a uh um, it's, that's not a derogatory term. As the people who are genuinely interested in how this is going to change our lives, what, what you know, what can we learn uh, in these very early days about what blockchain can do for us? What can we do on a local basis to to uh, to investigate Bitcoin, to investigate other cryptocurrencies, to investigate the blockchain technology? And I really like that that dynamic. I, you know, I love the name, the blockchain show. Clearly, that's what kind of first attracted me and, and maybe stumble across you guys, but. But I actually really like that kind of dynamic. There's the there's the the, the detail, the technical side of things that Steve um, brought to the table in spades. But there's also the um, you know and this is this is not an, uh, again not a derogatory the kind of the innocence side of things that, that you and Sarah brought the the yeah that's that sounds that sounds as though that should be interesting. But how can that be interesting to me on a personal level? Um, so that was um, something that really attracted to me. You know back in uh say around episode 35 you were talking to eric Voorhees, who i think was um big on some of the um oh shapeshift side of things i think eric was, was involved in that um and uh and you know sarah then talking to to steve about uh um talking to uh george nuri uh about uh and, and talking to austin fathery and so it's really uh, an interesting dynamic that kind of got me hooked on the show, this is before I was ever considered uh, joining into the show, um, uh, and and made me interested. It made me subscribe to the podcast, and uh, and hey, I've been a listener ever since then, even when I'm listening to the sound of my own voice. Oh, well, thanks, Mark. It's really good to have you guys on board. I, uh, you're <clears> right, I'm, I'm I'm the commoner guy. I, I but the problem nowadays is I spend so much time just you know actually producing the audio and. For the show that I don't really have much time to uh, to do that anymore. I, I kind of miss that. That's why I, I'm hopeful that after this episode, we kind of start season two and try to get back to a little bit more of that. But again, I'm really glad that, uh, you know, we met virtually. We've never really met in person, but it feels like we've known each other for quite some time. Um, yeah. To, yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's good to have Feel you guys like old on. Friends. The knowledge. Old friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no and it, and, it, and it will be it'll be fantastic when we uh we hook up for a breakfast burrito somewhere in california in a in a in a, in a year's time or or less hopefully what kind of beers what kind of beer is that breakfast burrito is that california beer it is yeah it's it's, it's definitely an ipa yeah 
that'd be that'd be that'd be very good. That'd be My, a lot of microbrewery. Fun. Yeah, a few calories anyway. I, th- I think we'd be uh, we'd be pushing you there, eh, Ethan, with some uh, video recording as well. That'd be quite good fun. Perhaps we can uh, go and visit the Golden Gate Bridge or something. Another another thing I've loved about this show and I loved about the the past. I don't know, nine, how long is it since we've joined in? It's kind of nine to near, I don't know, it's over 12 months now, isn't it? What, yeah. 14, 14 months, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, that's flown past. Is um, I've, I've actually really enjoyed helping out with the website side of things. Um, I'm not sure how many of our listeners uh, go to that uh, other than just kind of downloading and connecting to the podcast via, via iTunes or, or whichever medium they connect to our podcast. But I've actually loved um, helping move the website along getting sarah's uh, graphics out there because because they they're a fantastic huge part of the show um getting you know links and and, and information from our uh, from our sponsors from our uh, interviewees out on the website making it feel like a an interesting uh, place to go and visit i hope it is interesting for people and useful for people to visit if it's not please tell me and i'll try and do do better but i've really enjoyed them um, yeah, bringing the website along from what was maybe quite a, I don't know, not very interactive, not 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 very exciting place, and and putting a bit of personality behind it. It it, it certainly is great, Mark, and I, I love looking at the website to remind me of what I've done, and uh, who I've been interviewing and what they look like. It it's certainly good, and especially the graphics as well. I, I do think that Sarah adds something great to the podcast with those uh, good oh, graphics. Yeah. We love Sarah. We love Sarah. You, you've done good there, Ethan. Oh, thanks, guys. It looks great now. I, def- I want to get it sounding great. So that's I'm putting together uh, a Patreon, and, and hopefully we can... Hello? Uh, you, you're still, still there, there, Ethan? Ethan? Over. Over. Come in. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> Bring up, Ethan. Come, Come in. in. Darn. <laughs> I was just going to say that we need we need to raise more money so that the show can sound better. So I guess that's to my definitely point. definitely do need to do that, yeah. We definitely know. and and we've had some great ideas. You know, Ian's brought quite a lot of uh, of, of ideas to take. You know, let's launch our own coin. I wonder how many times you've said Ian over the past uh, fourteen months, let's launch our own coin. You know, I think I think that's definitely an opportunity in the future. I'm not sure we'd benefit from it now, but um, yeah, because we welcome uh, Bitcoin, Ether, and just your good old US dollar. Um, but uh, but you know, if we can find a use for that coin that that actually we can give back with what we receive, that that it's not doesn't just feel like a uh, like a trick, like a like a game to get people to sign up to a to an ICO or a, or a, uh, a token generation event, which is the uh, I think the correct politically the politically correct term now. I'm, I'm sure I'll move on to something else once the uh, once the SEC gets involved. Um, but uh, you know that if there is a value in what we're talking to you about now we'd love to exchange that value with with you the listener and we'd love to then be able to invest that and and be able to deliver more value in the future so i think i think that's what blockchain is kind of all about is that trusted exchange of value um whether it's whether it's a currency whether it's you know physical um uh, or physical whether it is a a a a financial value uh, whether it is an exchange of of uh, ideas uh you know i think that's what we're interested in doing longer term um in the meantime we we love getting together we love having a chat and we love trying to bring to the table um some some interesting concepts from from really interesting people around the world uh, and we'll keep doing that yeah ab- absolutely and i think that all of the feedback we've received from all you listeners over the past yeah and more has been fantastic and helped to shape the show but please send in more feedback if you want to see something new this is the chance to do it because we're going to change the format slightly moving forward make it more entertaining more fun and uh, make sure we have keep up that good quality of guest on the show as well as having those random personal interviews and perhaps some video stuff in the background because hey you, you don't look this beautiful without using some video occasionally, hey? Well, there we yeah. go. Uh, are, are we wrapping up episode 100? Well, it's, uh, yeah, I, th- I think I think looking back, it's been some been a, certainly a great 14 months that we've been involved and maybe, what was it, 12 months that we've kind of done it more regularly. Um, uh, I've, I've loved participating. I've uh, tried to make the time uh, 
in amongst quite a quite busy, interesting period uh, in my day job. Um, I would love to do this sort of thing full time, maybe not podcasting, but, but something in blockchain technology. Uh, and this has helped me enormously learn about blockchain, learn about cryptocurrencies. That's why I started listening to this show, because it was a great ready reckoner, a great introduction into what's hot, what's not in blockchain and crypto. And I hope that's what we bring a little bit to our audience and, and we, we do a little bit more over the next uh, over the next 100 episodes and we'll see where we go. Absolutely. And yeah, I'd, I'd love to be doing something like this full time. But in the meantime, if anybody has got a transition, transformation, implementation project, uh, love to get involved. So please get in touch. But apart from that, uh, I'm, ha I'm having a whale of time doing this podcast. I, we've met some fantastic people. We've got a great bunch of listeners out there. Thank you for downloading. Please tell your friends, your family, and people in the streets to subscribe to us. And if you do have any feedback, then please just, just send it in because we, we try to respond to all bits of feedback we get. We're on and, Facebook. Uh, also, it was also a shout out to our previous interviewees. You know, as I said, I'm meeting Nuggets next week, hopefully. Uh, we've already touched base with Wax, who I think we're maybe going to talk to soon as well. Um, people who we've interviewed before, we, we'd love to share with our audience, you know, how those blockchain uh, companies, those blockchain related companies have progressed in the time since we first spoke to them. It's all very well, you know, kind of talking to us, giving us your pitch for the ICO, basically being a, a, an audio white paper. Um, but actually, we want to see what's happened in the interim, what's what, where, where they've moved to, uh, how they've actually turned this from an idea into reality, uh, how their company's doing. You know, they, they've all launched these ICOs and got a bit of investment. What have they done with that money? What have they done to pay back their investors? So it'd be really great over the next few months to to start start touching base again with some of the people we've already talked to, and and uh, and seeing how they're doing. Because yes, this space is very wide and a very broad opportunity for a number of people. Some people will come up with an idea, get an ICO, try and do something, and and not and and not succeed. Um, and and that's almost as important to hear as as the success is, because some people out there listening to this show might also want to try the same thing and and they'd rather hear what it, what it means to um avoid failure uh, as as it does to succeed i agree i think that is quite important and we're starting to hear in the news about icos actually having to give money back and icos not delivering on their promises so yeah let, let let's focus on that and focus on what people have been doing and what's gone well and what's gone badly. We know a lot of people we've spoken to see have jumped through different hoops and that's what we want to do. We want to give you, the listener, an idea about the other mistakes people have made, how you can save yourselves from making those mistakes and actually move forward in this very uncertain world we're living in, even more uncertain in the blockchain ecosystem not knowing who's going to survive, who's going to come out the other end and where this is going and how big this will be for the technical and finance community. So thank you for listening. It's been a pleasure to be of service to you and please keep listening, keep subscribing and helping <clears throat> us along this little journey we're making here. Yeah, it's been great being the new kids on the blockchain, which then someone subsequently came along and stole the idea from. Uh, so it's been great innovating in this space, coming up with great ideas and interesting ideas that other people are interested in. Exactly. So that was your little trip down memory chain, as you like to coin it, Mark. Yes, that's uh, memory, a trip down memory chain. I look forward to somebody else coming up with that podca podcast idea and name in the very near future. Well, they, they probably will now that we've been named one of the top 12 podcasts in the known universe. One of the 100 blockchain influencers in the known universe and all sorts of things. Yeah, I don't know how we stumbled across that I mean, or, or stumbled into that. Uh, and, and, and it's been a pleasure doing it. I quite agree. Ethan? Uh, guys, I, I saw an email from a PR company come in and they mistakenly left you know, all the, all the people that they sent it to as well. And it was all those 12 other podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a danger of being in this group, I guess. And I don't want to end up like 
other shows. I, I really like, Mark, what you're saying about kind of the roots of the show. And it's, it's really yeah. good to have you guys on board. You know, I'd like to maybe have you guys kind of steer the, the content a little more. I think I was kind of caught up on just trying to have content weekly. Mm. And, you know, there's definitely a few few projects that kind of slipped in that maybe maybe yeah, it, you guys wouldn't keep, have. It was good to keep the ball rolling, right? It was good yeah. to, uh, at the time, uh, we, we went through uh, ups and downs ourselves. I think, you know, like probably our, the, uh, the blockchain itself, you know, we've been through peaks and troughs. Sometimes we've had very fallow weeks when, uh, when we've not had anything interesting to bring to the table or, or not having anything that maybe we would ideally like to bring to the table. But actually, it's still useful to bring the not so great stuff to the table. It's, it still gives an impression of what's out there in the world. Um, there are some great podcasts and, and vlogs, you know, uh, YouTube channels on, on blockchain. It's, it's a privilege to be part of that movement. I'm learning from some of those. I'm sure they're learning from us. Um, we, you know, very much like to represent that, um, you know, the, the, the guy on the street, the guy in the bar, the girl in the hairdressers, the, Man in the a- Audi A4, as Ian, Ian says, the, 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 the bearded chap on the fixed wheel bicycle cycling through Shoreditch. We want to be engaged with you, the listener. We want to know what, what makes it interesting for you. And we want to do better. Yeah, drinking Earth's filtered coffee. That was probably my favorite line from Ian <laughs> last season. <laughs> so, launching into the new season then, Ethan. Woohoo! Yeah, guys. Yay! Thank you for joining us. Onwards and upwards. Take care now, everybody. Keep on listening. Keep those cans hot. And uh, we'll speak to you in the near future. Well, we'll speak to them next week with a new format. Woohoo! Yep, I better get to work. (laughs) Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. To learn more, visit theblockchainshow.com.